It's bad enough that most people are afraid to go on video. And with all of the different video marketing options that you have, it's easy to get overwhelmed and not take action. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a very simple, easy way to apply video in your business that actually does get results. I used to always be grinding it out. I used to be burnt out in real estate, always looking to generate leads, whereas right now, I've built my business to the point where business finally does come to me. So stay tuned right to the end of this video. Number one, video is public speaking. Now keep in mind, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. That's what Zig Ziglar said. And if you look at my earlier videos, they were terrible. And I was super, super, super nervous to get on video. And I was worried about what people might think of me. And I was worried about how people might perceive me. But then I learned, guess what? It's the same you that shows up on the listing appointment. And there's three ways to practice. You can practice by yourself. You can practice with a partner or you can practice on the public. And if you've committed to a video schedule, what it forces you to do is practice on the public. And if you have to think through what it is that you're gonna say when you're on video, what you're essentially doing is working on your presentation skills so that committing to a video schedule actually will significantly improve your ability to communicate and your ability to, to present over time. And there's one really key concept that I learned um, through Dale Carnegie Public Speaking Training, which I'm I highly recommend and it is just simply talking about the things that you really know about and so yes you need to have a structured what to say next but you also need to bring your personal experience to the conversation which is what helps you finish what it is that you're going to say with confidence and leave this note if you put on video and you don't think people are going to like you well technically doesn't that really save you time going on the appointment and getting rejected anyways and if they do like you when you get on the appointment you don't have to sell yourself now all you need to do is sell your services and at the end of the day the crappy video that i put out is always gonna outperform the video that you didn't put out. And even though a lot of your videos in the beginning might suck, guess what? The people that watch you from beginning to end and stick with you, A, they're going to admire your courage for getting out there and putting yourself out there. And you are gonna gain respect from those people as you continue to improve and get better. By the time you're a rock star, people are gonna be saying, I knew that person before they were famous. Number two, video is marketing, not prospecting. And it doesn't really replace your prospecting efforts. However, it should bring people to you. And when you do talk to people, what it will do is create this relationship where you might not have spoken to them in quite some time, but if they're seeing you regularly on video, they're gonna talk to you like an old friend that you've consistently been in touch with. Although because it's video, it's a little bit odd because it's kind of a one-sided relationship. They see you all the time, but you don't necessarily see them all the time. And that saves you a ton of time in building rapport that creates a lot of depth in the relationships that you have and like I said when you do finally get on the appointment it makes your conversion rates absolutely go through the roof and it helps you avoid toxic clients and toxic relationships because like I said if they don't like the you that you present on video you've dodged a bullet trust me Number three, it's really important to know what your goal is in doing video. I think this is one of the biggest reasons why people fail or people don't stick with video because they just say, everybody else is doing video, so I should be doing video. Before you create your content, you should keep in mind the ideas. What am I looking to achieve? How do I want people to perceive me? What's the ultimate goal that I'm looking to accomplish with this video type of content? And then of course, mix it together with all of the other types of content that you're putting out on social media. But as a real estate agent, a couple really simple ways to get started on video is number one, do a monthly market update video. And if you're nervous, you could either pre-record it and post it on your story, or you could just record it directly onto your story because guess what? If you don't like it, you can delete it. And if you're not super confident with that video, it's gone in 24 hours anyways. You can also create shorts, cut videos onto TikTok and on Instagram Reels. And same thing, those are a little bit easier to edit then maybe longer form video on, on YouTube kind of like this. You could also do a live video talking about, you know, the real estate market or the stats, but make sure that you're not just rattling off the numbers. Make sure that you're speaking to your experience. You say listings are up, sales are down, 
And here is a story of how that's reflected in my business recently and an example where people will more likely engage into that type of conversation and it's a lot easier for you to speak from that conversation because it's something that's very personal to you and it's something that people can relate to. One of the other things that I recommend for one of your first videos if you haven't done video before is to actually invest some money and to spend some money to hire a professional videographer that's going to create some really great b-roll they're going to create some really great cuts they're going to work with you sort of get over those nerves that you have doing your first set of videos and they're going to chop it all up and they're going to make you absolutely look like a rock star which is what i call your for your video debut and what you do with that is of course you post it on all of your social channels and then you might even spend some money boosting that property to make sure that everybody that you know everybody that you know of sees it because it's you in your best light and people are of course more likely to share and help promote that initial first video debut as well because it's novelty they haven't seen you on video before and they're super pumped up about the fact that you look like a rock star online so you're gonna get a lot of really great engagement from that and then on a move forward basis you can start to leak out the different types of content that you want to create and then constantly when you're out in the marketplace if something pops into your head that's a question that people always ask write that down in the notes section of your phone so that you know that could possibly be one of your next video topics and ultimately I think what's most important with all of this is that when you choose your strategy make sure that it is something that you know for sure confidently that you can stick with long term and so splash marketing is something to help get you started but the monthly market update video speaking to your personal experience is something that you can do monthly and you can actually forget about it for the rest of the month and that's just to get your feet wet with video and doing it consistently so that it will evolve over time as you continue to add more layers to it so are you using video for your business if not why not let me know in the comments if you are which platforms are you currently using and what style of videos are you currently putting out I'm curious Number four, understand what your primary social media platform is. Because when you know that, you will then know what type of content will best perform on that channel and or the other way around. If you're looking to create a specific type of content, you will then know which channel you should focus on because you will know that type of content performs best on this type of channel. And always have one primary social media channel and you can take those videos and repurpose it or cut those videos and put them and blast them out, repurpose them to to other channels but you do have to have a primary channel I've actually written down a number of videos that you might be creating to help sort of jog your memory to jog your mind on this so whether you're creating tutorial videos tips and tricks commercials how-to videos frequently asked questions TikTok shorts vlogs YouTube channel interview style videos or podcasts determining which platform you use is going to be super important because as an example I've opted recently to use YouTube as a platform to put long-form video together to promote what it is that I do for other real estate agents and partnering with them and supporting and training real estate agents I've wanted to do that for a very long time but YouTube can be a very time-consuming platform to be involved in it is a bit of an animal to get some success and some traction with YouTube it's a big time commitment whereas TikTok might be a little bit easier to get started on but even TikTok can be a huge investment of your time I like YouTube because because if you post a video on there that video can perform for you for years and years and years to come because it's essentially evergreen content that people will be searching for years after you posted that video TikTok, however of course as you know you could really go viral on TikTok, and TikTok is also probably the easiest video editing application out there that is very engaging content now depending on what again your goal is with the content you're putting out there are there a lot of people in your market that are engaging on TikTok? TikTok and what are the demographics for each platform there might not be as many home buyers and sellers on TikTok as there might be on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram but if you invest your time on that platform now it could serve you long term number five what is your bandwidth as I'd mentioned before I didn't have the bandwidth prior to you know earlier on in my career to build a YouTube channel where now I finally do because I can afford the leverage required to have support people help me build it so when I started in the 
beginning, I literally just did Facebook live videos regularly where back then nobody was really doing them. And that got me a lot of, you know, I would say awareness and credibility that, that brought a lot of people to me. That kind of got me started with doing video. But it's important to remember, you need to be involved in income producing activities as an agent, which is essentially prospecting, going on appointments, doing lead follow-up and negotiating contracts. And if you're not doing those things, you're not making money. So it's easy to get caught up in the busy work of creating a marketing channel or getting marketing activities and social media related things. But don't forget what's important in your business. This is the top of your funnel, essentially. Anything marketing related is the top of your funnel and you need to continue to prospect and keep in touch and do lead follow up and go on appointments and negotiate contracts, like I said, in order to actually make money in real estate. So again, you might think that, well, I'm not enough of an expert to talk on video, Chris. You know, you've been in the business for 10 years. It's easy for you to say, well, put it this way. Even if you have a real estate license, day one in real estate, you know more than most people do. You are in the real estate business. You are active in the real estate market. And so you definitely do have a perspective and some experience that the general public doesn't, which is why I recommend from the beginning of this video, I said, speak to your personal experience. Speak from what you know. Speak from whatever experience that you have that will support you. And again, think back to what skills, assets, and attributes do I have? I mean, are you were you previously a photographer, a video editor prior to real estate? Were you a radio talk show host prior to real estate? Are you super tech savvy? Maybe not. That's not the case for most people. But for me, I had construction experience. So I could bring that to real estate. So you can speak to that. Do you have management experience? Do you have customer service experience? Do you have one-on-one, -on -one, you know, customer experience? Whatever your experience is prior to real estate, it might just be experience dealing with families on a personal level. That definitely applies to real estate. The list goes on. Be creative and take what it is that you have to add your personal brand to real estate so that it becomes a tangible asset that you can literally take with you no matter what you do with your career, no matter what you do in real estate, no matter which company that you work for, you have your own personal brand, which is worth something. All right, if you apply these strategies and you get good results in your business, you'll probably be looking for more. And if that's the case, definitely check out all of the other content here on my channel. Don't forget to like and comment on this video. Of course, subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.